And a lot of you know the catalyzing story for me, really where all this started to set home, happened back in 2011 when someone sent me an article about a guy named Isaacson. And I had never heard of Walter Isaacson, but his claim to fame was he was Steve Jobs' biographer. And it was an interesting read because he was being interviewed a few days after Steve Jobs had passed away. And the article went like this. Steve Jobs spent his final days surrounded by close family and used the opportunity for a final interview to explain to his wife and children why he wasn't always there for them. Jobs was quoted as saying, I wanted my family to know who I was. I wasn't always there for them, but I wanted to explain why and for them to understand. Now, I give this guy Isaacson a lot of credit, because according to the article, there he is with a dying man close to the end, arguably the most successful entrepreneur of all time, and he fired a question at Steve. And he said, are you glad you had a family? Are you glad you had children? Powerful question, especially in that moment. But Steve fired right back. And this is what he said. It's 10,000 times better than anything I've ever done. And right there, I had an awakening. And first, I tried to dismiss the lesson. I said, well, Steve Jobs had a reputation for being a jerk, so I can't be surprised about this. But then I started to think, what if the rug of health was pulled out from underneath me right now? Would I be in the same situation a few months from now, explaining with final interviews why I wasn't there? I thought of all the times that I set benchmarks in my business, and once I hit that one, then I'd have more time for my family. And I also thought of all the times I had read through different philosophies that shared this common thread that said, a person receives extreme clarity at the end of their life. And if this was true, maybe Steve Jobs was leaving behind some clues. I decided that day, as I continued to grow my business as an entrepreneur, my family was coming with me. They would not be left behind. And it was at a time in my life when I really needed to hear it, I had been reviving a real estate investment company from the dead just out of the meltdown that a lot of you remember. I was in the process of growing my family from two to four children. Some of you that know my story, I have the beauty of knowing both biological and adoptive children. And this was right at the time when I had been approved to donate a kidney to my father. So I don't know if I just got pushed to a point of critical that just made me have this new curiosity and commitment to this thing called family. And it's been the best work that I've ever done. I've gotten to work with people like Rick's family and so many over the world. And I can say with every confidence, what excites me is none of us have to run up that mountain in a way so hard, so fast, so frantic, that when we stop and look around, our family's either gone or what happens more often, they basically view you as a stranger. You're a part-time disciplinarian or an ATM machine. And that type of disconnect doesn't have to happen.